Irreverent, entertaining, cool. You're listening to LA Talk Radio. You're listening to On the Couch with Dr. Michelle, right here on LA Talk Radio. This is Dr. Michelle Cohen, and you are officially on the couch here on L.A. Talk Radio. Welcome, everybody. As always, a great show for you today. If you'd like to call in, the number 323-203-0815, 323-203-0815. Or, of course, you can email me if you have a question. You're shy. You would not like to get your voice on the air. Uh, that email address is Straight Talk Doc. At gmail.com. Straight talk doc at gmail.com. So let me ask you something. I mean, how do you feel about changes in your life and embracing change and success for that matter? Well, today I'm going to be talking about helping you find your purpose and fulfilling your passions in life and kind of embrace these changes as well. So that's what we're going to be talking about as well. So are you sometimes sort of fearful or resistant to change going on in your life? Hmm? Yeah, well, most of us are. And, you know, I believe that resisting and trying to avoid and fight good or what you might perceive as bad changes creates a lack of flow in our lives. It makes us feel kind of stifled and unhappy and filled with fear. Now, filling with fears is probably one of the most crippling feelings we have. But it's really important to embrace change and realize how we can create our own destinies. We can do it. And we have to meet the challenges of changes that we learn about ourselves more than at any other time. It's very difficult seemingly out there. A lot of competition, you know, a lot of negativity, but a lot of great social media, which can help us as well. And um, so we need to just find out more about our purpose and our passions and what we want in life. You know, and start to open ourselves up to a lot of changes that we can create for ourselves. You know, what's funny is uh, in my private practice office, um, a lot of patients who come in to see me, they're dealing with depression and, and kind of a lack of energy and momentum or just kind of the lack of desire and motivation to do something that they know they should be accomplishing. And there's a simple answer. <laughs> I know you guys have heard it before. Just get started. Just get started. Don't overthink the process of what you need to do. Don't be so heavy on yourself. Don't make the tasks giant. You know, just break it down into small pieces. I I think that so many of us think that our work and relationships and classwork and the way we uh, appear to others, you know, is so important. It's so important, and we have to always be worried about what so many people are thinking. We always have to be on guard, but we have to think about ourselves, and we have to expand you know, our visions and what we want to create in life. We're always going to have moods. We're always going to have distractions, and we always have life events to deal with all the time. But if we can commit to doing something every day toward a task— and following what my on-air guest has to say today, you're going to have a lot of success in your life, and you're going to find more purpose and passion. So let's get with it. My on-air guest today is Linton Bergson. He's a sought-after speaker, author, and champion of change. And as you'll hear, he's a, an inspired communicator and strategist. He has a record of enhancing performance for individuals and companies, Fortune 500 industry leaders as well. And uh, today we're talking to him about his latest book. It's really good. It's a good read. It's really smooth. Not that complicated, but really insightful to help you out. Um, The book's called Purposeful Vision. And uh, see your vision. Know your purpose. Linton Bergson. Linton, welcome to the couch here with Dr. Michelle. Thank you, Dr. Michelle. How are you? I'm great. How are you doing? 
Very well, thank you. Good, you are doing well. <laughs> you certainly Apparently so. Are. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, thanks so much for calling in here on the on the show. And I always one of my favorite questions is asking my guests is, you know, what were the things that inspired you to come up with this really helpful book, Purposeful Vision? Over the years, I've been working with many organizations and people, and I found that one thing they've been unable to do is to bring a vision into fruition. They can have it in their mind, but they can't necessarily bring it into reality. Yeah. And so having sitted many people with that, I thought I'd put, put down some things in this book that I thought may be useful to help them do so. Oh, that's great. And you sure did. Um, we're not going to reveal too much about your book because we do want folks to pick it up and really get into it and use some of the tools that you have in here as well. So um, let's just kind of jump into this and and we probably will have a lot of emails coming through. So if that's cool with you, maybe we can help some folks out there listening. Uh, Absolutely. Great, Linton. Thank you so much. Um, so what what are some of the main reasons why people don't fulfill their dreams or find their purpose? I know it sounds as though it's been said many times before, but a lot of it is a fear. Yeah. And also on a more basic level, they just don't know how to. Yeah. You know, over yeah, the yeah. years... I certainly realize that people don't have the right direction or the right tools to make their vision come true mm-hmm. and bring it to fruition. So mm-hmm. that's the two things I found, fear and mm. simply not having the right tools. Fear and having the right tools. And you do talk about the tools in your book, which is wonderful for folks. So, um, you know, it, you also talk about, we're going to talk about some of those tools, just give you guys a taste a little bit. Um, Linton, you talk about the importance of harnessing our vision and purpose. So how does this help folks out there really achieve their goals? Harnessing, how do we do that? Well, you have to establish in yourself what's important to you and what's going to give you the most satisfaction in your life. And if you don't do that, you're like a ship wandering around the ocean without a rudder. You have to understand exactly what it is you'd like to accomplish. And part of that, Dr. Michelle, is understanding what your vision is. What is it that you feel that you're meant to do in this lifetime? What do you feel it is you were born to do? What is your calling? And I, I think that is a very, very important part of who we are as human beings that we connect to. God, it really is, Linton. You know, uh, it, it's it's so common that I hear people come and say to me, I, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know how to find. I don't have any passions. I must be a loser. All of my friends have these passions, and, you know, they feel this sense of purpose in their life, and I don't know how to do that. I sometimes don't know how to tell them, except, you know, we take those particular tests that show interests and, you know, things like that. How would you suggest that a lot of folks out there find their passions and and, or their purposes in life? Well, that's really my book, and part of it is is that we have a little voice inside of us, and we can mm. call it whatever we want, intuition, mm-hmm. the little voice keeps talking to us, and it yeah. niggles at us, I call it a niggling feeling oh. that we have inside of us that says, you know, you should be doing this, you should be doing this, <laughs> yeah. it's something you should look into, right. and it stays with us. I think if we answer that call of that intuitive voice, mm. that's part of our passion, that's part of, of what we're being called to see that we can do. Mm-hmm. We all have it, the question is, are we listening to it? Well, there you go. I mean, that's the thing, Linton. I think with all the chaos and, and you know, craziness going on, as I say, in this world today and trying to keep up and a lot of the media that is is not too positive about, you know, job statistics and <laughs> all that stuff we hear, we have to kind of slow down and, and go within and, and find that intuitive voice. And I know you, you know, you're a teacher of this. You're, you're amazing to helping people, you know, with helping people find that voice. So a little bit deeper here, how, how would you suggest that people intuitively go within? I mean, there's a lot of folks who say, oh, meditation or, oh, a lot of people have tools to write things down. What, what would you suggest we find that intuition within us? It's very individual, Dr. Michelle, and we have to find out what that individual process is for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, while they're listening to music, while they're taking a walk, mm. some people find they're inspired with something, you know, that moment that comes to them. Sure. So I think, sure. yeah, we have to know what our process is and how we find that. Mm-hmm. But I think mm-hmm. the important thing is once we find our process, and that is a process to find that, yeah. then we have to use that on an ongoing basis as 
as a process to access that little voice oh, and wow. then listen to it. Yeah. So, as I say, you may be walking, you may yeah. be listening to music, whatever right. comes to you in those moments mm -hmm. that stays with you and keeps coming to you, that's something that you need to listen to because it's consistent. Mm. Well said. By the way, if you'd like to uh, email us here and you have a question, you don't want to get your voice live on the air, you can do so. If you'd like to ask my special guest, Linton Bergson, he's the author of the book Purposeful Vision. Great read. Helps you see your vision and know your purpose. You can uh, do so at straighttalkdoc at gmail.com. Straighttalkdoc at gmail.com. The number here live is 323-203-0815. If you'd like to call, that's fine, too. Um, you know, Linton, I'm always interested in, in hearing how people got started. And, and who, who are some of the most influential people in your life who helped you become, you know, the inspirational speaker and writer that you are? You know, there are two figures. Mm. And they're not alive right now, but they're two figures in history that have had an influence on me. One is Paramahansa Yogananda. Oh I don't know gosh. if many people would have heard of him. Oh, yes. I go to the Self-Realization Institute once a week here in Los Angeles. So Absolutely. Oh. So that, <laughs> that particular yeah. individual and his writings and his teachers yeah. inspired, teachings inspired me. I'm Mahatma Gandhi. And oh I think that gosh. those two individuals, now I don't believe, Dr. Michelle, that people pass on, they don't have an influence. Yes, I so agree with you. So you know, yes, the influence yeah. remains. No, it really does. It absolutely does. And if we can, you know, embrace it and take it on, that's carrying part of them as well. You know, and bringing it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I have to say, the part of my own inspiration was from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Is just looking at life through a certain window yeah. and a certain prism, and I, and I thought to myself, you know. A lot of this doesn't make sense just the way I'm looking at things. So I started to, as I mentioned in my book, unravel the ball of string myself. <laughs> yeah. So there was a self-motivation along with inspiration from these great people. You are so lucky, though, at such a young age that you were able to open your heart up to these um, you know, messages and this inspiration. A lot of people don't get it. A lot of people are middle-aged or older, and they just still don't quite allow themselves you know, to get to some of these messages. You know, well, you know, one of the things you mentioned there was, was very profound. They mm. don't allow themselves. Mm. Mm. That's and right. I think we have to allow ourselves and don't, and don't be frightened to move into these new arenas and question what it is we are presented with on a daily basis by family and friends. I call it personal culture. Mm. What are we really doing? Mm. Who, who, who are we, we really? And these are the questions that I asked from a, a very young age. Uh, once you ask the question, you see, mm -hmm. you can seek the answer. Yes, it's true. And again, seeking the answer is, uh, you know, as you say, kind of getting in touch with that intuition and, and allowing those answers to come in. Absolutely. And, and these are things that I think need to be discussed more. I think yes. the, the intuitive process from, uh, from understanding what that really means to you mm -hmm. and how that affects your life. Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of things, a lot of books out in intuition, yes. but I think there are things that we need to really bring to the fore so it is a predominant factor in our life and yes. not something we put on the back burner to say, oh, oh, oh I will get to that. Mm -hmm. No, it's the other way around. Mm -hmm. You make that the predominant factor. Once you make that the predominant factor, you then work your life from that point instead of just guessing as to what you should or should do. Wow. Great answer, Lynn. What, one of the uh, things that I often ponder um, is... How, how do we find the difference between our own sort of fears, you know, our self-based fears and, and some of the negativity that we believe about ourselves based on whatever our experiences have been that are not so great? How do we, how do we find the difference between some of those negative things within us, fears, and intuition, which is more of a positive, I think? You know, how, how can we sort of delineate between, gee, I'm just not being paranoid. I'm, I'm feeling intuitive about this particular thing or situation, but it's, it's not that good, maybe. And I, so how, how do we find the difference between those two? Well, I mentioned my book. I think introspection is an important 
part of our lives to find out what our belief systems are and where fears are coming from yes. and how they surface. Mm-hmm. So when we look at ourselves, and I call it personal leadership in my book, as we look at our own personal leadership and we begin to unravel our own ball of string and peel back the onion, we can, we can differentiate between what, what is necessary and what is unnecessary, mm-hmm. what's making us paranoid and what isn't. Mm-hmm. So unless you do that, unless you take the time to say, you know, let me take a good look at myself, and that's great leadership, by the way, and who am I, as I mentioned earlier, then you can begin to differentiate. But if you haven't done that, everything that bubbles up inside of you is a problem. Yes, exactly. And we can find those, you know, that information in so many different ways. You know, whatever, whatever sort of we can get in touch with within ourselves. Again, whatever kind of makes us feel good or inspires us out there in the world, you know. And we will know. Yes. We will know because, you know, some of these things are intangible. Yes. But what happens to one that begins to connect with oneself, one's purpose, mm. is an indescribable feeling of, you know, mm. something just feels right about this. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. And and I love I love your connection with Paramahansa Yogananda because I mean, yeah, I, that is so right on. He was so into intuition, and you know that we are pretty much all one and the same, and you know that we have that higher power source within us, and we and we are all capable of amazing things, but we just have to sort of know that. <laughs> you know? Yes, we do, and, and and the great things about his teachings are that. He makes it very practical. If you look at some of the teachings, he gets into a lot of other things, but he also makes it very practical. And, and that's one of the things, Dr. Michel, that I really think is important. I call it practical spirituality. Mm, yes. And you have to have a basis of, well, what practical use is what I'm reading or learning from any source mm-hmm. in my daily life? If there's a daily application, I can say, okay, I understand it's spiritual, mm-hmm. and we all know these terms, right. but does that have a practical application? Can I see a result? I think that's very, very important for us today. I do, too. You know, because we, we do. A lot of people say, oh, no, you just have to know it, you know. But so we do have to see that we can create this stuff out there in a practical application, you know, into the world. By the way, folks, uh, in case you just tuned in here, you are on the couch with Dr. Michelle, and my special guest here on ILA Talk Radio is Linton Bergson. He's the author of the book Purposeful Vision. New book just came out, See Your Vision and Know Your Purpose. Very inspirational, and it really will help you along your path to sort out things that you may need to clarify in your life. About You know, you, you may not feel like you have a direction. Uh, what is my purpose? What will fulfill my heart? You know, someone said to me um, at the beginning of the week, who was a client, and they said, I don't think I've accomplished anything in my life. My siblings are all very successful, and I feel like kind of a failure that I haven't accomplished anything. I, I haven't focused on a purpose. So I had pointed out to that client all the good things that they had really done in their lives. What what would you say to someone who who came to you and said that, Linton? Well, you know, the acknowledgement that we give ourselves is based on many different things. Is mm-hmm. it an external measure? Mm-hmm. Are they looking at the external measure of what their siblings may or may not have done, or is it an internal measure, or is it a combination of both? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And getting back to the introspection, yes, that introspection, yes. that going within oneself to really examine where do these feelings come from? Why am I saying this? Why do I feel this way? Where does lack of, of accomplishment come from? Because you know, Dr. Michelle, there are people who have accomplished an extraordinary amount. Right. And right. will still say, I don't feel I've accomplished anything. That's really true. That's really true. And whatever that is about psychologically or comparing themselves with people out there in the world, it's amazing, isn't it? It is, and you hear that, and you look at the external. <laughs> right. If you look at it, and you don't know them, you say, my goodness, but look what you've done, right? Right, right. And they, and still they feel see, empty. Yeah. Go ahead. But, but you know what? You know sometimes why, why we do feel empty? Hmm, tell me. Because we, we haven't had that um, emotional fulfillment. You see, things external can only do so much. Yes, yes. And that emptiness cannot be filled necessarily by external things. The emotional or the spiritual fulfillment is an anything. And it comes from meaningful relationships with people. Yes, yes. And you are a living example of that because you give so much. And you help people out and you help groups and companies and you inspire people. You know, in your speaking engagements and, of course, your book as well. Well, thank you for that. No, it's true. I mean it. But um, you're very welcome. 
But um, no, it's really true. I, I, I'm I, with you. I'm along the same lines. I always tell people that you have to go within first. You have to go within and not look out there. There's so many people even talking about relationships, you know, loving relationships, romantic relationships, whatever. A lot of people say, I want to find the right person. The right person hasn't come. It's, it's almost like you have to have that relationship with yourself first and really care for yourself. You may not love yourself yet. Somebody may not get there, but they sure have to sort of like themselves and work through that before they can give to a relationship or, you know, anything else for that matter, right? Absolutely. It starts, you know, with that post leadership I talk about. You have to really begin with yourself. Yep. Yep. And I know we've, we've all heard that. We hear it time and time again. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is you can't give what you don't have. Oh, that's so true. That's a, and and you, the, yeah, go ahead. No, that's right. I mean, it's just the premise of, of what I believe is is the crux of the matter with, with us all. What can you give? Well, if you have to go back to yourself, well, what have I done? for myself, that I understand myself, mm. and how, how, how I am, how I operate, what my needs are, for me to be totally integrated, thereby I know what I can give, because I've worked on myself, and I know myself. You mm. can't give what you're not aware that you have. <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> and also, you can't look out there at other people to fill within you what you, you don't have, just like you said. You, other people can't fill you up. I mean, folks can compliment us or make us feel good about ourselves, indeed. But we have to get in touch with that first within ourselves, right? Yes, yes, we do. Mm. One of my favorite quotes that you put in the book here um, is from Einstein. And, of course, he has wonderful quotes always. And um, the quote you use is, uh, imagination is everything. It is the preview of life's attractions. Can you elaborate a little bit more on why you put that in your book and what does that mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, Albert Einstein obviously had an insight to, to a lot of things. Mm, yes. And one of the things you understood was imagination, because the reason I love that quote and put it in my book is because if you can't see something, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. And, you know, we, we use simple vocabulary in our lives that yeah. is evidence of that. Yes. You know, Dr. Michel, how many times have we heard people say, I can see myself doing that? Yes, exactly. That's now, exactly right. Mm-hmm. We say, yeah, we, we say that, but we just kind of say it mm-hmm. in a nonchalant manner. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But it means something. It really does. It does. If you really think about our vocabulary and how we use it, and then people say, I cannot see myself doing that. But, but why would you say that? Because the minute you see yourself doing something, mm-hmm. something happens to you emotionally. Yes. And, and physically. It really does. Yeah. So that's why I love that quote. Yeah. And that's why I do believe your imagination is a preview to your common events. Mm-hmm. Because if you can see it, and you can feel it, and you mm-hmm. can emotionally connect to it, you'll act on it. Oh, yes. And, and uh, you know, some people say if you can hold it in your head, you can hold it in your hand. <laughs> you know, And it's also the way we speak, like you said. Um, and it has a lot to do, people talk about affirmations. But if you create affirmations that are really meaningful to you, that you can believe in. If you say them and believe in them and think them in your head, you can actually start sort of creating those situations out there in your life. Don't you think? Yes, affirmations are interesting because you know you're right. If you have to feel, this is what I really believe and know in myself, Mm -hmm. is that you have to feel what you're saying. You have to feel it in the cells of your body as an emotional response within the core of yourself for an affirmation to work. Yes, you can't just say it because you read it in a book and somebody told you to say it. Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, no, it has to have some real resonance and feeling and a deep emotional connection to yourself that you honestly own that affirmation. Right. And the only way an affirmation can become real is you may keep saying it. Yes. But if it doesn't have an effect on you emotion- emotionally, it's not going to have an effect on your life. It's so true. And what whatever it is that I think people want to say or write in their so-called affirmations, you know, I am that whatever, uh, happy executive at blah, blah company. And they, they really start to, or I am becoming that. It's slowly, slowly, slowly. Things that you can sort of slowly believe, you start writing those things that are very positive. And again, emotion, feeling that you are that successful person or feeling that you are that loving person who can give to other people. you got to feel that first. 
But yeah, you, know. you have to you have to yeah. carry it. It has yeah. to be something that is within the fabric of your being. Mm-hmm. That's so true. And these things don't happen overnight. That's why I talk so much about the personal leadership. You got to start somewhere, as you just mentioned. Yep. Yep. But start. Yep. Just start. <laughs> yes, you know? exactly. Just do it. Don't think about it. Just start doing it right now. Right now. Right now. Well, maybe exactly. after the, maybe after the show, everybody, if you'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let's get into the cool stuff, too, that I love that you wrote about in your book, Purposeful Vision, Linton Bergson. It's um, the three facets of consciousness. And this is so cool because it's psychological and it's right up my alley. I love it. It's the subconscious, the conscious, and the super conscious. So can, can you talk about these parts of our consciousness and why are they so important in the process of helping our imagination? Absolutely. The, the three states, as you mentioned, superconscious, conscious, and subconscious, are critical because the superconscious state of mind, as I believe it to be and know it to be, is where the intangibles happen. Mm-hmm. In other words, the imagination happens in a superconscious state. You can't say that, that the imagination is a tangible thing. Mm-hmm. It's something that you're thinking about, you're imagining it hasn't happened yet. Right, right. So it's a vision. It's something that you see that could happen, you could make happen, and mm-hmm. that you would like to happen. That's a superconscious state. Mm-hmm. Now, the conscious state is where we live. This yes. is the everyday life that we have with each other. Mm-hmm. So you want to bring it from the superconscious into everyday life. Mm-hmm. Now, what's stopping that happening, in my opinion, is is the subconscious. Mm. Yeah. Because the subconscious is, is the tape or the recordings that we have consistently played to ourselves from all the events in our life that bubble up when we go to make something happen in our life from the superconscious. So let me explain that. Okay. You may say to yourself, I would like to do this. That's a super, super, super conscious, excuse me, state of mind. Mm-hmm. You want to bring to the conscious, and mm-hmm. then the subconscious takes us to play, mm-hmm. maybe from your mother or your brother or your friends, mm-hmm. and say, well, who the hell are you to think that way? You can't do anything, remember? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. So, so now you're stuck. Yep. Yep. So now you've got the superconscious going. You want to bring it to the conscious, but the subconscious has read its head and stopped you before you started. Mm. Isn't that the truth? Yes. You know, and, and it, it, if we break it down, you know, biologically, they, they call it creating neural patterns that just keep repeating themselves because they're habit and, and they keep growing. The neural patterns keep growing in our mind of, I'm not good enough. Mommy told me I'm not good enough or, you know, I've been hurt in so many relationships. I'm not lovable or who, whatever. And, and, you know, Linton, you've worked with so many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. People are damaged from these messages. They're hurt. They have low self-esteem. They don't believe in themselves. And that that subconscious, you're right, sabotages us all the time. So how do we get rid of that, that, that subconscious area that keeps negativity fresh? That, that is a great question. And, you know, the thing about what you've just mentioned there, which is very important, we're really talking about habits. Mm. Yeah. So they're talking about things rearing the head. And, <laughs> and in some way, we obey the subconscious that is holding us back for, for no reason other than it's playing a tape that we choose to believe. So how do we change that? Mm-hmm. We begin to act differently. Let me explain a little bit about that. Okay. We might want to set a goal or do something that's a little different because we have a vision in our superconscious state. Mm-hmm. But we have to begin to change the belief system that we're not good enough in order to do that. Mm-hmm. Right. So we're not, Right, so what I suggest is, is yeah. that you do a little, small, what I call, stretch goal. Uh-huh. Okay. You take yourself out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. to defy the belief that you're not good enough. So you do something small that you can do to show yourself that you are good enough, something that you didn't think you can do. Yes. It doesn't have to be big. Mm-hmm. Yes. But do it, and don't be fearful. Get started. Yes. And as you accomplish that very, very small stretch goal, and you realize you could do it, guess what happens? Hmm, What? You begin to change. You begin yes. to believe something else about yourself. Yes, yes. But you have to have the courage right. to do that little small stretch goal to step out of the belief system that you have etched in your brain that you're not good enough to do this, that, or the other. Yes. Do something that you feel that you couldn't do and you weren't good enough to do. Mm-hmm. And then what happens is the subconscious mind, and we can't always explain these things, begins to shift because now the old tape can't play all the time yes. because what will happen is as you refer back to that subconscious and want to be negative it will then say but you did this didn't you yes absolutely 
and 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 you suggest also Linton that we you know it, re- repetition and rehearsal we keep doing it we keep doing it and that builds those neural patterns and that keeps you know creating those the small itty bit itty bitty changes you know that sort of convinces our you know subconscious that hey wait a minute we're 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 going against those beliefs. We're saying, wait a minute, I can do this out in the world. I am taking action. I am showing myself, right? Just a little bit. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> excuse me, Aristotle, the famous philosopher, understood the hate of the patterns of behavior. Yes, yes. And he talks about habits mm-hmm. and how you want to create new patterns and new habits in order to shift the old ones. Yes, yes. And that's what we really want to do, Dr. Michelle, is just create new habits and new patterns. Now, I say just do that. <laughs> it's not that simple, but you have to. And again, you can't do this for anyone, not you, not I, not anybody. Yeah. All, all you and I can do is that you have to act. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, but act in a comfort zone that says to you, you know, I will stretch myself a little bit to see mm-hmm. what I can do. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And some people have greater comfort with greater stretch goals. Mm-hmm. Right, they do. But, we, but I can't make you do it. No, exactly. No, you you are a great, you know, coach and speaker, and you encourage folks, you know, how they can go about doing these things, but we all have to find it within ourselves. If we really, really, really want change, and some people like to complain about it all the time, but if you really want it, though, you do have to step out of that comfort zone, right? You just got to take a little bitty step, like you suggest. Right, Linton? Yes, absolutely. And, you know, the other thing that I mentioned in my book is, is very important to that point, Dr. Michelle, is this. Yeah. Your personal culture. Yes, absolutely. Can you tell us a little more about that? For sure. At the end of the day, what happens is this. Who you surround yourself with and what you surround yourself with Mm. is very important to your support in order for you to change some patterns. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have a change in your life and you keep yourself surrounded by people who keep telling you you're no good. Oh, gosh, yes. Mm Mm-hmm. I keep telling you, whoa, who do you think you are to try such a thing? No matter how small it is, Mm -hmm. and you keep your personal culture and your circle of influence that way, your chances of changing and moving forward become much more difficult. Right. I so agree with you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, you go. (laughs) So you want to change your personal culture, and and what will happen is, as you begin to change and you accomplish some of these stretch goals, by default, you want to surround yourself with other people. It just happens that way. But you want to surround yourself with people who, when you mention, you know, I have these issues, for a better term. I'd like to change, and I'm thinking of doing this to change them. But they go, why don't you do that? And I'll be there for you to help you. Mm, yes, exactly. That's, That's exactly your choice right. of who's in your personal culture. Mm-hmm. That's so really that, true. All these things have sequences to them. Subconscious, superconscious, conscious, mm-hmm. personal leadership, yeah. reflection, mm-hmm. introspection, yeah. personal culture. You start putting all these things in place to think, but all these things really add up to how I can change my life. Not just one thing has to change. I have to change some of my friendships. Yes. Some of my stretch goals, my influences, and then I have a support group. You know, and then you begin to have what I call a strategy. That's in my book, too. Mm-hmm. You have a strategic focus to accomplishing what you set out to do. Yes, exactly. That is perfect. That is really well said. And I think a lot of people get hung up. You know, you talk about that personal culture. The folks you keep around you who who do influence you a lot. And as I say, you know, a lot of us get hung up in, in drama. A lot of people have drama. And we, we kind of get pulled into that a lot of times. And the reason why we don't get out of a negative relationship, no matter what it is, uh, friend or a romantic or a, a, a co-worker or something like that is because of guilt. A lot of times we feel like, well, I can't really pull away because I'm, I'm really in this and I, I go, I, I'm not comfortable with drawing boundaries because it's not okay. And, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of stuff about trying to really get in touch with, you know, who is probably a good influence on you in your personal culture and, who is not and those who are not maybe you need to change that up a little bit to to get yourself healthy about who you are yes and i think that that's in in the line of work i've done over the years you know we have a personal culture and in a company it's it's company culture mm-hmm. yep. it's all the same thing yep and and yeah, we, and, and one of the things I mentioned in my book too is 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 a self talk, which you just mentioned. What 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 are you telling yourself? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, good yeah. grief! Some of some of the things I hear people tell themselves, I'm thinking, wow. I mean, where did you get that from? And I really have to, you know, take the task and say, well, yeah. well, well explain to me how you got there. How did right. that 
talk right. come into your head that you believe this now. Right. What What are just out of curiosity, Linton? What are some of the things that you hear people say that that make you go, "What? <laughs> huh?" <laughs> well, Doctor Michelle, you know what's really fascinating about my response to that question, mm. <laughs> and you're not going to believe this, but <laughs> one of the responses I get is, "I never really thought of that. I don't know." Wow. Good for you. <laughs> Wow. That's right. That's what I think. I think, wow. But that's because your personal introspection. Yes. And going back into looking at your own personal leadership, how did I get where I am, which yes. is where we started out. Yep. Well, if you haven't done that and you keep using the same self-talk, mm. there's no reference point as how you're going to change it. So you keep saying the same thing over and over again because you're not really finding a solution to change it. Yeah. Yeah. I so agree. You know, I think that's so important. So, you know, we do. You, you, like you said, you have all these different elements that you have to pull together in your book, which, by the way, in case you just tuned in here to L.A. Talk Radio, is called Purposeful Vision. Uh, see your vision and know your purpose. And, of course, I'm talking with the author, Linton Bergson. It's a great read. And it, it's really, you know, really helps you along in finding a lot of your purpose and who you are, how to get in touch with intuition, um, and pretty much step out into changing your life be courageous you know um and like you said linton you can't force anyone to change but i i I think i hope if it gets miserable enough for people that they would really just try to make that change they try to be courageous or make little baby steps or whatever we call it small steps as you say right well, you know, Dr. Michelle, that's, uh, I always find this fascinating to me. It's like I say to people, you know, the universe, whatever you want to call it, universal consciousness, God, whatever we want to call it, we yeah. don't believe in those things. We all have feelings and we all have little voices in us. Yes, yes. And sometimes that little voice comes tapping very gently mm-hmm. and it says, you know, this doesn't feel quite right, does it? Mm-hmm. We've all had those moments. Yeah. And you go, oh, you know, I'll just bypass that. And then it taps again. You know, mm-hmm. there's something wrong about the situation. And you feel that you should change it, but you don't. Just like a relationship or a job or anything. Sure. And then suddenly it gets so bad, like you said, the pain gets so bad, you get the two-by-four. <laughs> right. <laughs> and when the two-by-four comes, you could have dealt with it before, because we all know when we're not comfortable and things aren't making us happy or they're not working. Mm-hmm. But then we allow it to get to such a point where it's so bad and we're in so much pain. Now we have to act. Now we don't have the comfort of easing ourselves out. Now we have to do something immediately, usually. Yes. And now the stress is twice as bad. So my suggestion is when, when you are aware of something mm-hmm. and, you, and you can feel it inside of you and it's not quite working, right. pay attention. Yes. Don't be scared. Mm-hmm. Open your heart and open your mind to, why am I feeling this way? And ask yourself, and then, and then try to get some solutions to it before you get a two-by-four, because it's <laughs> easier to deal with. God, you're so right. I, I think the problem, maybe, do you agree with me? A lot of the problem is, is that when we do have these uncomfortable feelings that come up, we, we shove them down again and just sort of defocus and go on our way, back to our computers or focusing on, I don't know, a work situation or something that's, uh, I don't know, mind-numbing, just to get away from a lot of those feelings that come up. Do you think that? I, yeah, I agree with you 100%. I've written in exactly my book to just what you said, the distractions. Mm-hmm. The computers, the, 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 the cell phones, instead of taking, you know, just a few minutes mm. to say, why am I fe-? Shut everything down. Yep. Why am I feeling this way? And you know what? There's no computer that's going to save you. There's no cell phone going to save you from dealing with what you have to deal with. God, is that true? Really well said. You know, we do. So, yeah. Yeah. Do you, um, do you meditate? Do you have uh, some form of, you know, just going within yourself or focusing, speaking about focusing on what I'm feeling or, you know, identifying really what's going on within our bodies and minds. Do you have a special way of doing that that you might suggest to others? Over the years, yes. I've had, I've done meditation. I've done many, many different things. And I would say this to you, that if you ask me personally, Mm -hmm. I'm just a person that, Try to be in tune with myself, and that's mm-hmm. a twenty-four hour mm-hmm. thing for me. Yes, good for you. I'm very conscious of myself. Yes, and so I'm aware of that voice. I'm aware of what's going on with me. I listen to it, and so I'm basically acting on what I'm feeling and hearing most of the time. Mm-hmm. So 
for me, it's in a constant space. Not that I don't need to get still and quiet, but I can get still and quiet, do get still and quiet, but I'm constantly listening to myself. In other words, I'm trying to be in tune with yes. myself. Yes. And I think long term, that is the objective of everyone, is to be in tune with themselves no matter what. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But I think we do need, and I certainly do have my own time, when I don't have a real process, I can say, I do it this way. Mm-hmm. I may just sit back in my chair, rock back for a moment, and, you know, take my pen and tap on the table, put it down, and go, hmm, what's yeah. that about? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Just a moment. Just yes. a moment. You know, sometimes. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We need to mm-hmm. do that and inspect it and ask our questions, you know, through that self-talk that you talk about. <laughs> I think it's okay to talk to ourselves even. I know you're talking really about self-talk in our minds to to find out, but some <laughs> I know this is crazy, but in the privacy in the privacy of our own offices or rooms, <laughs> right? When we're away, yeah. there's nothing wrong with talking uh out loud about uh, you know when we have to analyze things. I think the the audio component of it is really helpful as well. You know. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, we we just have to allow ourselves to express ourselves and be free within ourselves in the privacy of our own moments because Mm -hmm. if you can't be private in your own moment and you can't just express yourself and be free, how can you express yourself to anybody? No, it's so true. Exactly. And that's right. You know, just just sort of talk about it, analyze it, be able to do that. And you just, thank you for sharing your process, uh, you know, of just sort of going within and analyzing. And, you know, you're, you're pretty conscious every moment. And what I love about that it takes so many years to get to being in the moment which i feel from you and i and i you know from reading your book and everything is it difficult to stay in the moment do you feel for most folks yes i think and also you know i would add that but obviously it's not always easy for me Mm. but to stay in the moment yes i think that we by just by who we are as people in the society that we live, we project out. We project so far out that we stress ourselves. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it hasn't happened yet. And it's not where, where fear comes in. What will happen if this happens or that happens? Right. And I think that, that we just have to stay as we can. And I, and I use this term because I think it's very important, not from ego. Mm-hmm. But we, we need to be in love with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we need and we need to understand that everything's okay now and what can I do now to make the next moment better? Yes. Or, or the next few months better mm-hmm. and have a little plan and strategy, but also be adaptable. If things don't go quite the way we thought, don't be fearful about it. Adapt again. Yes, adapt again. And and do you think it's negating re- the reality of what's going on sometimes when we say it's going to be okay? It's just okay where I'm at right now. I think it's all right to say that as long as you're giving your, your true and honest best to where you are right now. Yes. What I mean by that is sometimes we say that, okay, I'm doing my best. And I've met this over the years in the work that I'm doing. And because we've been told that so many times, just do your best and it's okay. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't mean you are. Right. <laughs> and sometimes you have to be aware of the fact, maybe, maybe I'm being very honest here, maybe your best is not your best and it's not good enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have to be, if I question someone and say, well, what is, what is your best? What's the best you're doing right now? I literally hear them say what they're doing is not their best. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that's... The that's, personal culture supporting what they're doing, which is not their best. Well, that's true. That's really true. A lot of the influences and stuff like that, exactly, around them. And, and sometimes we all, we do need a little kick in the rear <laughs> to get us going, to get us moving. But again, like you said, I mean, only we can find it within us to to go for those changes, you know. It, it is. It is. A lot of it is that yes, self motivation is understanding. Why would I do what I need to do to make a change? What's the benefit? What would I get out of this? How does it affect me? What What is it that I'm missing? If you start looking at all these questions, you start strategizing as to where you want to go, how you want to get there. What I call gap analysis. Uh huh. Yep. And what it is you need to do to get there, and you yes. begin to act, and you even do a little bit, you'll feel much better just by doing a little bit to begin to do it. Yes. And then when you start to feel a little bit better by doing a little bit that you really believe in, it, it just sort of opens the curtains a little bit more for you to get step in a little bit deeper, right? Yes, because mm-hmm. what's happened is you're giving yourself hope mm-hmm. instead of despair. Yes, exactly. 
Hope versus despair. I love that. <laughs> the final phase. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, it's true. I mean, I, you know, we all want to find hope. We, wanna, we want to find a sense of accomplishment. We want to be okay with who we are. We want to, you know, just be our own best self that we can be. And, um, you know, I think your book, Purposeful Vision, really is helpful in so many of those matters. In so many ways, you, you can tell people how to, you know, get on the road to get started to help themselves. I so, think one of the most important things that we have to understand is, and I know that it's been said before, but I will say it again, yeah. is that each one of us is unique. Mm-hmm. Yes, each one of us has a gift. Yep. We're not to bury our gifts. Mm-hmm. but to go forward as individuals mm-hmm. and help each other. And then if we do that and we establish our own individuality in a helpful and positive way, mm-hmm. then we can begin to affect the collective. Yeah, it's so true. And and a lot of that, don't you think, Linton, is, is um, when you talk about getting in touch with the emotion, the things that, you know, you really need that emotional passion within yourself to to find a better life for you to to get out of the uncomfortable zones and stuff like that it isn't that you know sort of going out of yourself out of yourself now and and deeply caring for others yes yes it is and and what you find is is that one of the things i found is very important for people to have and i again touch on in my book is enthusiasm Mm. Enthusiasm for what you're doing, enthusiasm to connect with other people, to share your passion. And what happens is, is when you have bought into your own vision, and you have bought into your own capabilities, and you have bought into what you can do, and you can do that effectively, Mm -hmm. that enthusiasm is contagious. Oh, yes. It really is. It's amazing how people react to someone who is truly passionate about what they're doing and, and truly means it. You know, they well, feel it. There's the key. You hit the nail on the head and truly means it. And the only way you can really convey that message, and again, I share this with CEOs and everybody else who's trying to convey a vision to a company, is, is that you own it, you believe it, you know it, you know yourself, you know what you're capable of. So the enthusiasm comes from a wellspring inside of you that says, I know this can be done. I know how it can be done. I can share that with all of you. Will you help me get it done? Will you buy my vision? And if there's any obstacles, we'll work it out together because I know where I'm going. I'd like you to help me. Mm, beautifully said, Linton. That's so true. And, and again, um, to quote you, you cannot create anything you want from life if you cannot see it as a possibility. And, and that's what it's about, is really seeing it and believing it. And then going for it. Right? Yeah, anything we do in life, whether we understand it or not, whether remodeling a kitchen or whatever we do, you got to see it before you achieve it. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> well said. <laughs> wow. Well, um, what's the best way that uh, listeners can, uh, you know, find out more about you, your services, you know, as a uh, public speaker? And, you know, you're amazing. All of the accolades here on the back of the book have blown me away. I mean, you've worked for... Uh, so many uh, Fortune 500 companies, and uh, you, you're an inspired communicator and strategist uh, for individuals as well. What's the best way people can get your book and find out more about you? Amazon. You can buy on Amazon. You can go to my website and get more information on me on Linton Bergson, which is B E R G S E N, yes. LintonBergson.com. Mm-hmm. So the website you can get the book from, and Amazon and Barnes and Nobles, all those usual outlets. Yes, exactly. And the book, again, is called Purposeful Vision See Your Vision, Know Your Purpose. Linton Bergson, thank you so much for being such a great guest today. You're such an inspiration. Well, thank you so much for having me. I truly, I truly do appreciate it. Oh, you're very welcome. And uh, I'll look forward to your next book. <laughs> you got it. You take good care. Thank you. Thank you. Mm, bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Again, uh, folks, if you'd like more information, uh, Linton Bergson, B-E-R-G-S-E-N. Dot com. That's his website. And if you just uh, kind of tuned in a little bit late, you can uh, listen to the show. It'll be available for downloading and replaying right here on L.A. Talk Radio on my web page. You can just click on there, latalkradio.com, and on the couch with Dr. Michelle. You can listen to it again and again forever. All of my shows are also available on iTunes podcasts for free. Yahoo! It's on the couch with Dr. Michelle. 
It's about that time for me to leave. And um, listen, I always say do take care of yourself first, and then you'll be great for other people. And that's the way it works, and that's what we've been talking a lot about today. Thanks for listening. Be back next Friday at 11 with another wonderful, inspirational speaker just for you here on the couch. Oh, 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 oh,